So in this video, I'm going to talk about limits of polynomials, which if you recall, a polynomial is, is just a function consisting of uh, powers of x multiplied by coefficients and added together. So we are going to build our way up. First, we have to do kind of the easiest polynomials. Um, so here's the easiest polynomial in the world. This is a constant function, f of x equals c. Like, th these are the functions whose, the graph is just a horizontal line, like f of x equals 1. The, the graph of that is just a horizontal line. Um, so assume we have such a function, then I'm going to claim something obvious, but, you know, in this class we prove a lot of things that are considered obvious because this is proofs. Um, if we have a constant function, then what I'm claiming is the limit as x goes to a of that constant function is just c. This is like saying that the limit as x goes to a of 1 is 1. Like, if, if you have a constant function, then, then whatever the limit is just whatever the value of that constant is. But we'll go ahead and prove it anyway, because we have to use epsilons and deltas. So as usual, the proof starts with ep let epsilon be greater than zero. And then I'm going to, the, for these easy proofs, I'm going to kind of s skip the scratch work. I'm just going to tell you a delta that works. For this one, delta hardly matters. Th this is such an easy problem that I can choose a delta that doesn't even depend on epsilon. I'm telling you that no matter what epsilon is, I'm going to choose the same delta. I'm just going to let it be 1. And there's nothing even special about 1 here. Delta has to be a positive number, but I could choose delta to be 100, or I could choose it to be 0 0.0001. Any positive number would really work, because if you look at all I need to happen, I need this to imply that this is less than epsilon, but see, the thing is, for a constant function, this is always exactly zero. No matter what x is, that we're just doing c minus c. f of x is always c. So this is always zero. This is always going to be less than epsilon. We don't even really need to use this information. This number is always less than epsilon. That's why I was telling you that delta doesn't even matter. But for our purposes, we, we, need, we sort of needed to choose a delta, so I just chose something. But, um, so yeah, then, then the proof is done. We, we got that f of x minus uh, its supposed limit. We got that absolute value is less than epsilon, so we're good. Now let me tell you about the second easiest limit. And, and this is another very simple polynomial. This is just x to the 1 power. Um, so, I'm just claiming that the limit as x goes to a of x is a, which is, it seems like a very obvious statement. As x gets really close to a, x should be really close to a, right? Um, <clears throat> so, again, I'm not going to do the scratch work. I'm just going to tell you what works. We let epsilon be greater than zero. And on this one, I, I can't just choose anything for delta. I can choose delta to be epsilon. And, of course, I should check that that's positive, which it is, because epsilon is positive. Um, then, well, I'm supposed to check that if zero, or if absolute value of x minus a is between zero and delta, then absolute value of x minus a is less than epsilon. But since delta is the same as epsilon, this really is telling me absolute value of x minus a is less than epsilon. So I do get to conclude this. So I'm good. And that's why it's good enough to choose delta to be equal to epsilon, because I can just go straight from here to here. Yeah, so I'm good. Um, so those are pretty easy limits. Now... I would like to talk about limits of polynomials, um, which, if you recall, a polynomial is like powers of x 
multiplied by coefficients and added together, like x squared plus 2x plus 7 or something. And I would talk about, I, I would like to talk about limits of such functions. But I don't want to do epsilons and deltas every single time. So what we're going to do in this video is, is build um, just a rule that can handle all polynomials without having to go through deltas and epsilons every single time. So we're going to use it, we're going to use the, the following two things that we proved. Um, actually, let me try to tell you where we proved that. Meaning I have to go to e-learning. So which video did I prove that in? Yeah, so this would be, um, like, I think, parts four and five. So, like, here, here I'm proving that, like, the limit of f of x plus g of x is uh, L1 plus L2. Um, and then, yeah, here's proving that the limit of f of x times g of x is L1 times L2. So, yeah, and these videos were, um, like, limits part four and limits part five. So that's where we proved these things. And, yeah, by the way, in, in my notes now, I am, um, instead of L1 and L2, I'm just saying L and M, but it's the same rule. So we are going to use this and this. And these two rules to do all polynomials. Um, let me maybe, yeah, maybe I'll just do a quick example before I do the, the full thing in generality. Um, why don't I do the limit as x goes to 2 of, say, x squared minus 3x plus 1. So, you probably already know the answer. The answer is just what I'm going to get from plugging in 2. I'm going to get 4 minus 6 plus 1, which I guess is negative 1. So we expect to get negative 1, but this is all using sort of Calc 1 intuition that is not necessarily well justified for us right now in this class. Let me tell you a way that would be justified. So, maybe I'll put parentheses here. First of all, I can break up addition. So this is limit as x goes to 2 of x squared plus the limit as x goes to 2 of negative 3x. plus the limit as x goes to 2 of 1. I'm, I'm using this rule, the fact that I can separately do the limit of this function plus the limit of this function and just add those together. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I have addition coming on and I can just add the limit, whatever this limit is, plus whatever this limit is, plus whatever this limit is. I can do that. Now, I am going to break these things up even more, because what is x squared? x squared is just x times x. And I know I can break up multiplication. If I'm doing a function times another function, like x times x, According to this rule, I can do the limit of the first function times the limit of the second function. So I do the limit of x times the limit of x. I can do the same thing here. Limit as x goes to 2 of negative 3 times the limit as x goes to 2 of x. And then this one I won't break down because there's 
really nothing to break down. And now I can do everything. Now I can use this rule. The limit as x goes to a of x is always a. So the limit as x goes to 2 of x would be 2. The limit as x goes to 2 of x is 2. Now I'm going to do this one. Negative 3 is a constant, so I'm using this rule. So, and, and it's an easy rule to remember. The limit is just whatever the constant is. So this limit is negative 3. This limit, as we said, was 2. 1 is also a constant, so that limit is 1. And we got exactly what we expected to get, because if I check now, before I even simplify, I can already tell this is exactly what I would have gotten if I had just plugged in 2 from the very beginning. Of course, again, that wasn't formally justified just yet, but we, we knew that that was the answer we were going to get. Uh, and once again, this is 4 minus 6 plus 1, so negative 1. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's do that in full generality. If f of x is any polynomial, so it has a constant term, say c0, it has an x term, say c1x, and it goes up to c sub n x to the n, then what I'm going to tell you is that the limit as x goes to a of f of x is the same as f of a, meaning it's the same answer that you would get by just plugging a in. So let's prove that. And this, is, by the way, this is the first proof of, of a limit, because we're proving the value of this limit. And we're not going to directly use epsilons and deltas. This is the first proof of this form that is not going to start with let epsilon be greater than zero. The reason why I'm going to be able to pull that off is because we've done all this setup work. Like, we, we had to use epsilons and deltas to prove this. We had to use epsilons and deltas to prove this. We had to use epsilons and deltas to prove these two things. And now, now we're going to use all these tools, and we won't have to even talk about the epsilons and deltas in this proof. So that will be nice, because the truth is, hardly anybody likes epsilons and deltas. So the limit as x goes to a of f of x. I'm just going to start with this, and then I'm going to completely break it all the way down, and I'm going to get the answer that I want. So this is c0 plus c1x plus dot 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 plus cnx to the n. And I'm going to do it just like the example that we just did. First I'm going to break down the ad addition so this is limit as x goes to a of c0 plus limit as x goes to a of c1x. All the way to cn x to the n. And then I'm going to break down all multiplication. I guess this first one doesn't have any multiplication. But this one does. And let me, yeah, OK. I'll write the next term, because there would be a c2x squared. So c2x squared would get broken down like this. c2 times x times x, and I do the limit of each one separately. So I do the limit of c2, the limit of x, and then another limit of x. And I keep going until I hit the last one, which of course would be 
limit as x goes to a of cn times the limit as x goes to a of x, because this is x to the n, so that's like x times x times x, uh, n times. So I would break that up. Well, I have x times x times x, so I would do the limit of x times the limit of x times the limit of x and there would be n of these because this is uh, x to the n. Right? And now I'm just using my rules. I know the limit of any constant is just that constant. So the limit of c naught is just c naught. The limit of c1 is just c1. The limit of x as x goes to a is a. I can keep going. This would be c2. This is a and this is a, so I get a squared plus dot, 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 all the way to the last one. This one's a constant, so cn. This one is x. The next one would be x. All these limits are x. Every single one of these is x. So I would get x, or sorry, let me say that again. All these limits are a. <laughs> uh, the limit as x goes to a of x is just a. So this one is a, the next one would be a. This is, this is actually just a times a times a n times. In other words, it's a to the n. And in the end, I was claiming that the limit that we get is the same as f of a. So let's check. Well, f of x would be this. So sure enough, f of a would be this. So that is f of a. So now that we have that general rule, um, I can do I can do one like this much easier. I just plug it in. Now that I know this rule, I just plug it in. So 9 minus 6 plus 1 is 4. And so if, if we had that rule, we could have done this example a bit faster. Um, so, okay. Let me stop recording and upload this then.